Hey there, and welcome to this lesson on taking shape layers and bringing them into 3D space, 2.5D space, inside of After Effects, and making them more interesting. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about creating something like we see right here. This is called containment, and this is something that is a piece I did quite a while back, and it's on Pinterest, and people absolutely love this piece, and have asked me over and over again, how to create this. So I'm gonna show you how to go about creating something like this. It's not gonna be exact replica of this because I don't believe in showing lessons where I just show you step by step, here's how you recreate the exact same thing. I want to show you how to think for yourself and create your own type of interesting motion design with shape layers. So let's get started. We're here in After Effects. I've got a composition, I'm calling it box one. 1080 by 1080, so it's just a square composition. 24 frames a second, which is how I like to work a lot of times. And duration of 240 frames, because I want this to be a 10 second piece. Click OK, there's our box. We're gonna go up here to our uh, masking tool, but instead of creating a mask, we're just gonna double click and create a shape layer. And there's our shape layer. We don't want any fill here. So let's turn the fill off. I just want like a nice outline here. And let's go ahead and let's just bring this down in size. Maybe something like that so we can see it. Let's make it 900. Let's bring the stroke size down to maybe three. And let's go ahead and let's add a trim path here. And for our trim path, let's just start this Maybe about 17%, let's end it 17% and let's offset it a little bit here and we can't actually see anything. So let's just offset. I want it to kind of grow from the center point kind of here at the uh, horizontal center. So let's go ahead and turn on title action save so we can kind of see what's going on here. And if I bring it down, so it's 17, 18, let's just bring that you know, right, right up in there. That'll work for me. Let's hit a keyframe and we'll make them both 17, 17. And let's just make it a two second animation. So two seconds, 24 frames a second is gonna be 48 frames. And I'll zoom in here. And we'll just make it grow to something like that. And we'll select both keyframes, keyframe assistant, easy ease in so that just kind of slides into it and comes to a nice stopping point. With that, let's go ahead and command D to duplicate this rectangle. And with the second rectangle, let's just go into our transform here and let's rotate it. Uh, let's do 90. And maybe let's bring it down. Let's actually go into our path here and let's make it a little bit smaller. No exact science here. Maybe you know, let's go 700. So there we go. Look pretty cool. And then let's go ahead and turn off our title action safe here. So we've got two shape layers that kind of draw on here. They do draw on and come to a stopping point. So now let's use a repeater and there's our repeater. And let's just make it two copies, open up transform properties. We don't wanna offset the position, but let's go ahead and offset the rotation 180 degrees. Let's see what that looks like. Oop. So now we have this kind of interesting looking square that if I preview this, looks pretty cool. I'm gonna hit U on my keyboard and I'm gonna select both all four of these keyframes and open up my graph editor and just take this line here. I'm in my speed graph, which is typically how I like to work. Not huge on the value graph. I've always been a speed graph kind of guy. I like that. Cool. Now let's make it three dimensional. Just click in that box there. Now it's a 3D layer. 
and I'm going to duplicate it. So now I just have a simple duplication of that same layer. I'm gonna push it back in Z space. Let's go back about, let's go back 200 pixels here. And then let's duplicate again, hit P for position. We'll go back 400 pixels. And let's duplicate again. And for this one, we will make it 600 pixels. And let's do one more. Duplicate again, position, and this will be 800. Very simple animation. But you're going to see when we start bringing this into 3D space with cameras, it gets a lot more interesting, right? So if I go to actually two views here, I'm looking at my top view here, I can switch this to custom view and you can see that my layers are in 3D space here. And we're already starting to get, you know, just kind of an idea of what's happening here. It's just it's simple shape layers repeating, going back in space, creating um, a box, right? So let's go ahead and let's create another box. Okay, so here we have box two, same deal. It's 1080 by 1080, 24 frames a second, 240 frames duration, so it's 10 seconds long. And I'm going to, again, double click and just create a square here and we'll go back to one view so we can see a little bit better. And for this guy, if it's 1,080, let's just go down I will go down to 900 again, something like that. I think that'll work. And then we're also going to select the box and just make an ellipse and double click. And by double clicking, it actually creates the shape layer full size and in the composition. And because it's a square composition, it's going to create a full um, perfect circle. So let's take this one down really small maybe something like 10 by 10. And I don't want a stroke for this one. I'm gonna turn off the stroke, but I do want it to be filled with white. And for this guy, let's go ahead and add a repeater as well. And the repeater, we wanna do four copies. And we don't want it to be offset in position. We want it to be offset in rotation. probably about 90 degrees. And we're not seeing anything happen yet because we need to actually move the position. So now I'm just dragging this guy out. Oh, something like maybe you know, negative 450. And I'm thinking we need to go positive 450 as well. If I can make that work. And also, because we can barely see those circles, let's make them just a little bit bigger, maybe 15. Don't want them to be too big. That may be too big, but for now, that's gonna work. And I want this just to kind of expand upwards really quickly. So let's set a keyframe here, and we'll actually do a keyframe, easy ease in, and then we'll make it maybe 90%, not too small, and hit in. And it's, it's okay looking. Uh, could be way more interesting though, right? So let's just take that speed graph again. Let's make sure we're on the speed graph here. And let's just pull it all the way over like that. Yeah, so it just kind of pops into place. Turn off the speed graph. And to make it pop even more, I'm just going to what I did there was command click and took off the ease of that keyframe, the first one. So that works and we hit shift T for transparency and let's just make it fade in really quickly. So here we're at hundred percent, but at the very beginning we're at zero. Yeah, something like that. And then once it becomes, it, it rests in a place, I want to have another one that maybe pushes back in space. Maybe we'll do two of them. So one will push back, one will push forward. So what we'll do is we'll just duplicate this layer and for this, we're gonna hit P for position and we'll set a keyframe right here. And let's do a keyframe easy ease. And let's make it over the course of one second, kind of this one will pop forward. 
And actually, it would help if we'd make these 3D, layer, 3D layers. So there we go. So this one will pop forward. Let's make it pop forward 200 pixels. So let's just take a look at how that. And I want this to overlap just a little bit here. I never am a fan of one action coming to an end and then another one, another one beginning. Uh, a little bit of act overlap will really you know, help sell movement. And let's go ahead and take this one. And again, we'll just make it pull that speed graph out. Yeah, that's nice. Works for me. So I'm going to duplicate that layer. And instead of going forward, negative 200 pixels, I'm going to go positive 200 pixels. So this one will fly back. So there we go. It's looking pretty good. I think that's going to work for me for this box. So we'll go ahead and save this one and let's create another one. Okay, so now we've got box three. This is again, 1080 by 1080, 24 frames a second, 240 frames long. Keeping things very, very simple here. Very, uh, you know, I guess I, I guess I preach simplicity is always better with motion graphics, motion design. People get caught up a lot of times in things being overly complicated. Keep it simple, limit yourself, and you're gonna make something much more interesting. So uh, again, we're at 240 frames, but let's go ahead and just zoom in. Somewhere in here, maybe we'll make things end about two seconds. Again, uh, let's go ahead and make another, let's do another rectangle, double click there. And this is filled, which is great. Let's make it, so we're gonna add a repeater, just like we did with the circles. And there's a repeater, and we're not going to offset the position, just like before, we are gonna offset uh, the rotation. So 90 degrees, and then we're gonna go back up into our position here and move these guys. We'll do the same thing. We'll do negative 450, and we'll do positive 450. And we need to increase the copies to four. There we go. And I'm gonna hit Shift Command H to turn off my guides here so I don't see those guides. Um, with guide selected, see like I can see this box here and it kind of drives me crazy. So if I hit Shift Command H, it turns off the guides. Uh, let's go ahead and increase the size of them to 15. That'll work. And you know what, let's just make this one by itself. It's just, it's just gonna be four corners, just like this. So we'll go to 24 frames in and let's actually make it expand outwards. So let's do a simple scale easy ease. And for this guy, we actually will just, we'll take it down from really small. So 3%, highlight this guy, speed graph. Make it just really pop into place, yeah. And I am gonna take this first keyframe command click Yeah, I like that, looks nice. So this guy will kind of fly into place and actually let's make it happen faster. I'll change my mind here. Yeah, that's a little bit too fast, let's try 16. Yeah, that works. And then we'll do, we'll just duplicate this layer and let's actually just open up the contents of this layer and we'll just bring down the size of, uh, let's bring down the size of the repeater. So we'll do the scale. Actually, that's not gonna work. We'll bring down the transform like that. And I like to be very OCD about this stuff. So we'll go down 20%, something like that. We're gonna offset this guy, so maybe Columns in, we'll go maybe four frames in. And I'm gonna duplicate this guy, make this one at eight. And this guy, we will transform again down to, make sure I got the right guy here. Contents. Transform 60.
And let's go one. Eh. I'm thinking maybe one more time. Maybe not. Now we're going to take all three of these layers. We're going to make them 3D layers. Works for me. And let's just select all of them. Let's go right click and let's pre-compose. And we'll call these um, dots. And for the dots, again, let's make them 3D here. Let's duplicate them. And since we're working with values of 200, let's just go 200 back. And it's a little bit hard to see here. You can see here what's going on. And let's duplicate again. And let's actually go negative 200. Now, again, this looks, you know, when you look at this angle here, it looks okay. If you look at this angle, it looks like things are overlapping. It's not, it's not looking so great. Um, but when we add some depth of field here, it's going to bring certain things in focus and certain things out of focus, and it's going to help with that. So we're going to leave this as is. Maybe let's add one more. Let's just add a, a real simple square in the middle of this. And let's just bring down and let's find this guy. This is the guy that's in the center. So let's solo this guy. Let's solo this guy. And let's just kind of get these guys to line up in an interesting way. You know, maybe something like that. Or maybe I just do the inside. Yeah, I think I might do that one. Was that 540? There we go. I don't know. This one might work. It may not. But let's go ahead and move on and make another comp. Okay, so for this next composition, we're going to create actually a circle. So we're calling this circle one. Again, it's 1080 by 1080, 24 frames a second, 240 frames long. Good to go. And let's actually go in and let's make an ellipse. I can make that happen. There we go. And let's just shrink this guy down. Maybe 900 by 900. That works for me. And it's also with this, I'm going to try and keep this as, as many uh, shape layers inside of one, as many pieces of content inside of a shape layer as possible is what, how I like to typically work. So I have less layers to animate. Uh, if I have a lot of layers going on. So uh, let's see what else we need to create. Um, let's make an X inside of here. So to make an X, I believe we can do that with the star tool. And we will change this to, what is that, four points. And I think we can leave it star, but we need to take the inner radius all the way down. There we go. Okay, and let's bring the outer radius down something like 450. And we can also just rotate this. So it's more of an X and we'll go 45. Yeah, that works. And then let's also create another ellipse here. And this one will be our fill with no stroke. And we'll go ahead and take the size of this down to 10, maybe, maybe 15. And we're gonna add a repeater, just like we've been doing. Lots of repeating kinds of uh, techniques here, as you can see, we'll do four copies. And we're going to not offset the position, but we're going to offset the rotation by 90 and then move the position here. And I actually want to offset, make that 450, we want to offset the rotation by 45, not 90. Is that right? Nope, that's not right. Uh, let's see here. I think we just need to transform, rotate now. And I get asked a lot why, like, why am I messing with the 
values inside of the shape layers versus the just the transform properties, things like that. There's all different ways you can you can work with this stuff. It's a matter of choice. So I find that I like to work with values inside of the content of the shape layer first before I mess with just like transform values uh, for the entire shape layer. So that way I can really get things kind of fine tuned and then come back in and you know start animating things. So like maybe for this, I want the X to maybe like blink on. Let's try that. So we'll go into the X, we'll go into transform properties for the X. We'll do, we'll set a keyframe for a hold keyframe. So we're at zero. Go forward a frame, 100%, maybe two frames, zero, one frame, it's coming in, back down. Maybe something like that. And if I set my out point here in, zoom into here, I'll go back to one view here. Yeah. So then once the X comes in, so right here, maybe we'll have the, maybe the circle will start coming on at this point, um, which is not these points. Maybe the points actually do come on at this point. So we'll set, a keyframe here for opacity, and we'll just set one for zero to start. So it'll be zero there, and then 100% here. It's basically like they pop on right there, pop on, and then they pop on, and then we'll have the, the big ellipse, which is this guy right here. This guy, maybe he'll like do like a scale or something. So we'll do a keyframe easy ease. And maybe he kind of scales in a place there, but here, let's say maybe he's at that point. And also set a keyframe here for toggle. Hold keyframe 0%. And then he'll pop on right here as well. So let's just see what this looks like. I use my speed graph here. For whatever reason, it keeps defaulting to my value graph. I don't know why. I've been having some interesting bugginess with my After Effects the last couple days, especially today. Seems like every time I want to record, I have lots of issues, huh? And then maybe when this guy goes full, full on, this is where I'm gonna hit R for rotation. I'm gonna have everything do like an interesting turn. So maybe like a 90 degree turn. And select both, easy ease, speed graph. And I want them both just to kind of whip around. Let's just see what that looks like. Oh, that's too much. Okay, so from here, I want to actually start bringing in all these pre-comps we've made. We've made box one, two, three, and four, actually circle one. So three boxes, one circle, and then I've got my working comp here. And I like to call it working sometimes, sometimes I call it output, but this is kind of like a pre-comp that's gonna go into my output. So this comp is gonna be 1920 by 1080. It's an HDTV, 24 frames per second, 240 frames long, very basic. And then here I've got my audio track. And if I preview this, so that's the original audio that I used. And I've marked some places on here that I want some things to happen, right? So that's why I've got all these different markers here. And I may fine tune these a little bit more. I just kind of threw them up here very quickly uh, to see kind of where some things are gonna happen at. Um, but I know that that's where I want my camera to kind of do some interesting moves. Um, like we saw in this original example here, you can see pushes in, it kind of rotates up, kind of comes down and then kind of fades 
away as it pushes, you know, pulls away. So that's what I'm doing here. So let's go ahead and let's bring in all of our pre comps here. And we're gonna keep the audio at the top layer here. I'm just going to lock that layer and layers are all here. So let's go ahead and select the collapse transformations button here. And that's just going to say, hey, look at all these pre comps here. All these pre comps have three D layers separate in space. That's how we built them, right? So by turning on collapse transformations here, it makes it brings those a bit those capabilities of 3D pre comps into our main comp here, right? So if I go back here to let's just say custom view. There we go. If I turn off class transformations, you can see here, everything's flat. Nothing is reacting. I can make these 3D layers and push them apart again. But if I turn on collapse transformations, everything is separated in, in Z space. Now they're all at a position of zero on the Z. Um, but we can adjust that and, and do things with that if we want to. So here are our layers, let's go ahead and add a new camera. And this is gonna be a two node camera, that's great. Preset of 20 millimeters, great. Uh, enabled up the field, great. Uh, which we're gonna go ahead and turn that off for now. Um, you will realize that I'm using a two node camera here. A lot of times I use one node cameras. Um, as you've learned throughout ProFlows, I find it's way more easier to work with a one node camera. But for this type of animation, a two node is where it's at. And I'll show you why. So there is our two node camera. And because there's a center point here, point of interest, if I just move the position of my camera around, um, just not even playing with point of interest, just position only, that point of interest stays in place there. And you can see here, especially over in here, what's going on, right? You can start to see this thing is coming alive, right? It's starting to look kind of like containment, which is the one that we referenced on Pinterest. So let me undo that, bring it back to the center here. And we're just gonna start by doing a very simple, we wanna end up here. Uh, let's do keyframe easy ease. We're gonna use easy ease for all these keys. But um, we can actually go ahead and probably go back to one view and we'll go back to zero here. And at zero, I want to kind of be pulled back. I just wanna do a, a real simple kind of truck in. It's probably not the right term. I'm gonna push in here and then I'm gonna sit here for a little bit. Like I said, so I'll set another keyframe here and I wanna push in even quicker at this point. Now, I do not like being straight on to this. So let's actually, I'm just gonna delete everything here because I wanna give it a little bit more of an interesting angle to start. So maybe something like that. I'm also way too tight. So let's pull it back. And I'm just messing with X and, and Z here. Oh, maybe something like this is where I'm gonna end up there. Now I'm gonna right click keyframe, easy ease. I'm gonna back it up. And we're just going to zoom out a little bit here. And so we're just we push in and we're gonna sit there for a little bit till here. And then at this point, we're gonna push in real quick so we can really kind of see what's going on here. Now you can see this, this circle, um, this X circle is not reacting to the camera, right? So I need to go back in here. I probably did not make it 3D. Click that, there we go, problem solved. So let's just see how this looks. We push in, looks great. Pushes even more. Sure, we're gonna sit to about this point here. And then we're going to go, Let's move up real fast. We're just gonna to go to the Y position and something like, maybe something like this. And then we're gonna sit there and then we're gonna whip across real fast down. This is kind of an interesting move here. I really liked it in the original. It's kind of like just a real quick like whip pan. Maybe something like that. I'm not gonna mess with the Z too much there. Maybe even, just gonna get like an interesting angle on this thing. And then from there, we just go all the way back. We just kind of just fade, fade back. We just keep kind of 
pushing back in space and then it kind of just disappears as we're pushing back in Z space. And it'll kind of just fade out or something like that. So if I preview this, you can see everything happens very quickly. And that's because I want to offset some of these layers here. So maybe at zero, there's nothing there. And we kind of push in here and then maybe, maybe this guy kind of pops on there. And this is all just a matter of experimentation. And then maybe this guy comes in here and kind of sits there. And then maybe this guy comes on here. The circle I did like kind of in this area. So we're sitting here with the camera. So maybe the circle does its thing as we're sitting here. Maybe something like that. Let me just kind of pull away. Yeah, something like that. Now it looks okay. And if I preview this, let me go ahead and save that. And if I preview it, I mean, it looks okay. Um, I would probably go in and really just, you know, fine tune some of the timing of these different elements. Uh, like you saw, I, I so something needs to happen here, like right in here, uh, that's not happening. And I don't know what that actually, you know what that could be. So looking at this, this initial outer box here, it feels like it's way too much, right? It's way too many layers going on. That's too much for the eye to look at. Cause I'm, if I look at this inside layer here, what are the, what are the layers here? So this one is too much. Okay. So maybe what can happen is maybe just like a few of these come on and they're kind of sitting there. And then when we're sitting at this point, maybe this is where the rest of them kind of appear. So I'm gonna go to that point, double click. And this is where some of these things are gonna maybe expand more. Uh, maybe something like that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Let's just take a look. No, that does not work. So we'll just go back here and I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off some of these. Maybe one more here. Maybe two. Well, let's just try one. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and make these three dimensional layers just so I can push this one back in space here. I don't like how far out it's sitting. Uh, maybe I'll bring it in a little bit here. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Maybe actually I'll just increase the size of it a bit. And this is just a matter of just, you know, personal taste and kind of playing around with objects and, and seeing, you know, how things work together, how they don't. Maybe I could rotate it on the Y. I did some of this in the original. Um, and then with it rotate, I'm actually going to go back to zero here. And I'm going to turn off. There's one right here that I don't like. I, I think it's, it's one too many. So I'm going to go up here, new comp viewer, go into my box and find out which one that is. It's not that one. It's that one. So a lot of times this is where 
the time starts really kind of playing into it because you're you're experimenting, you're trying to find out what works, what doesn't work. I'm gonna go ahead and scale it back to 100%. Um, and then I'm also going to, at this point, go into my camera options. This is gonna make it look a lot more interesting. We're gonna turn on depth of field. We're gonna crank our aperture way up, maybe 650. Uh, we're gonna also change this to something like hexagon to make it look a little bit nicer. And then at this point, we're gonna just go in and start making uh, the focus point be where we, you know, where we want some interest to happen. So. Uh, we're going to set our focus distance here. We're going to set our keyframe easy ease. Just kind of see where we're at here. Maybe at this point, I'll kind of pull the focus forward like so. Maybe have it sit there. I like to really just kind of have fun here and just bring different elements into focus. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. You know, maybe it goes way out of focus here and then maybe it comes back. to Something like that. And then as it pulls away, I definitely want it to go out of focus. Something like that. And maybe right here, maybe it's, that's kind of nice. And then I'll, you know, I don't know. Let's see how that looks. Let's go ahead and save that and let's take a look. So right in here, there needs something needs to happen here. Like the, the circles, and they do it like an interesting rotation and things like that. But um, I want it to maybe pull focus. So maybe it just kind of loses some focus for a second. Maybe it goes back and then maybe it comes back in. Something like so. Yeah, and we'll keep it for that, you know, we'll keep it like that for now. Uh, in the original, I also had some text and things in there. So you could, you know, add some interesting text here. Uh, things like, if I just type, I don't know, containment. And just make it 3D and bring down the size of it a lot. Maybe 15%. And and maybe it you know pops on here. Maybe that's what it does. I don't want to do it with the camera. I want to do it with the text. So let's kind of center it up here. Um, and then we'll push it back just a little bit here. Something like that. And then save. And then maybe I'll just do an effect um, decoder fade in. That's an easy one. And maybe it just kind of pops in like that. I just want to have it come on right here. Works for me. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create a new composition. We're gonna call this one output. 
and same deal 1920 1080 24 frames a second 240 frames and to that one we're going to put our working comp into it and we'll drag that guy in there and with this guy we are going to go ahead and just Oh, let's do a little bit of chromatic aberration. Um, you can do this several different ways. You can use plugins, uh, which is what I prefer to do. Uh, you could use channel, something like shift channels. Uh, you've seen this done a thousand times, but red is on, duplicate it. Red is off, green is full on, duplicate it. Green is off and blue is blue. And then we're gonna set these to a screen mode. Now we're back to white. We only need audio for one of these guys. And you can just play around with the scale position. Maybe it's 101, maybe this one's 99. Maybe this one's slightly off, eh, just a little bit, something like that. Um, you could also, like I said, I typically would use a plugin for this, but just trying to keep it so, you know, those of you who don't have plugins, you can follow along. Uh, also, we could do something where we add a new adjustment layer. We'll call this, um, a oh my, After Effects is acting crazy. Uh, let's add some noise and grain. Let's add a little bit of grain here. I always like to finish off pieces with some grain. And we'll go not super intense, something like that. Let's also add a background. And for the background, um, maybe like a bluish black, just slightly. Something like that it might be too much. That's a little bit too on the blue side, but we'll come back to that. Uh, also for effects, I want to go ahead and add a color correction and I want to do a Lumetri color. And what I love about Lumetri color is there's some really awesome creative looks in here. Uh, things that you can just kind of play around with and get some really different types of looks. Yeah, I think maybe I'll stick with that one for now. Um, I also want to add another adjustment layer here and we'll call this effects two. And for this one, I'm actually going to add some glow. Now you can add the built-in after effects glow. You can use uh, optical glow. You can use deep glow. Uh, there's lots of different glows you can use here. I'm just going to go with my favorite, which is Sapphire glow. And um, just personal preference, I've been using the Sapphire plugins for a long time, and it's my go-to for lighting and glows and things like that. Just got some interesting looks to them. Like I said, you can use any glow plugin built into After Effects, not built into it, you name it. That's kind of an interesting look right there. I'm gonna go into my, uh, let's see here. Let's go into our brightness and I'm gonna control alt, or I'm gonna alt or option click on brightness. And I'm just gonna add a wiggle expression, which I love the wiggle expression. Uh, let's do eight times a second, maybe with a value of three. And I'm also going to add a flicker effect to this. I think, maybe not. Let's just take a look at how this looks. Yeah, uh, Flickr might uh, be kind of interesting here. So again, I'm using a Flickr uh, effect from Sapphire. Uh, there's lots of different Flickr effects out there. Uh, again, this is just one that I personally like. Campfire, it's just got kind of like that nice, simple, flicker kind of look to it. Um, what else we got here? What else we want to do? Okay, so I can, you know, tweak this all day long. Um, I might try a couple more things. 
Yeah, just flopping the order of the effects here. I like that a little bit better. Um, it's a little bit on the pinkish red side for me. I, I, I don't want it too much. I'm going to sharpen it up a little bit here. So that's nice. So that's with, that's without. So I definitely like the sharpen. Maybe turn down the vibrance. Nah. Maybe turn down the saturation. Yeah, it was a little too saturated. So maybe 62. That's nice. Curves. I want to bring down some of that red. Yeah. Now it's way more on the blue side. So bring a little bit of green into it. Back up in here. Take that down. Sharpen. You don't want to overdo the effects. I see a lot of artists that uh, you know, tend to overdo the effects. And you got to be careful about that. So let's just take a look at how this one looks. Yeah, I think the, the glow might be a little bit too much for me, especially when we get up in here. Uh, it's really intense. It's an interesting look, um, but it's a little bit intense. The um, If I was to duplicate this, turn off this glow, and just go in and pick like a more subtle, even like the default glow. Like I said, depending on what plugins you're using or the built-in effects inside of After Effects, uh, you're gonna have different results. And this is really what's gonna kind of just change the look, uh, make it look one way or, or another. So I'm just gonna, gonna go back to the default here and I'm probably gonna crank up the uh, amplitude here, the frequency, not the amplitude. And just kind of take a look at what this is doing. Um, I did like those kind of streaks that were happening vertically, which we lose those completely now. So it's really a matter of the kind of just in the middle there. So I'm gonna change this one to a frequency of 10 and three, go back to that original glow. And then I think I'm just gonna turn down, uh, not that one. Go back into my original here and maybe turn up the threshold just a little bit so it doesn't affect as much. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so it's actually been an entire day and I'm cutting back into uh, this project. The reason is, is that I like to have fresh eyes. I like to step away from projects uh, when I'm very deep in those projects and step away several hours or a day or two days and then come back with fresh eyes. And so I can have a new perspective to see if things are working or not working. And doing that helps me to have better work, okay? So this particular piece now, I'm looking at it and there's some things about it I don't like, right? Now, when you're in the moment and you're focused on effects and things like that, you can get really caught up in seeing the same thing over and over again and it looks good to you. But like I said, you come back with fresh eyes and it doesn't. And this is a case of that. So the first thing that I see that's not working for me is the glow, which I you know, actually said I liked it, but it's too much, right? So that's one thing. So I'm gonna turn that off for now. I'm gonna probably turn this glow back on. Um, I'm gonna make sure that it's got the same expression, so we're good to go there. Um, I'm also going to decrease the amount of chromatic aberration, and I think that's gonna be this one right here. It's gonna make it less, 100.5, and we'll do this 99.5. Chromatic aberration just needs to be very subtle. You don't need to do a lot with it. Something else that I'm seeing right off the top here is that these lines are way too thick compared to what I originally did, which we can see here, 
okay? These are really thin lines and the dots are small and that's why it's working, right? These are very thin, thin lines. These are too thick. So I wanna go in and I want to take all my shape layers and I'm just gonna take the stroke width down to one on everything versus three. So let's do that. I also want to take the, the um, dot size of these down. So let's just go into these really quick. And let's just see what size they are. They're 15. So maybe we'll do, we'll do eight. And I need to do that for all of these. So we'll make all of them eight. And this as well. I'm already liking this better. Change it from three to one. We'll go into these dots here. So these are all fills. And what size are these? 15, so we'll do eight again. Open this up. Eight again. And we'll open this one up. And we'll do eight again as well. Close that pre-comp. See, that was in box three. So now we're back to circle. So we'll make this one as well. Maybe we'll leave these dots a little bit bigger. I think I'm okay with that. And then we'll go into these box pre-comps here. And I think we're good on these guys. Something else um, I'm seeing here, and it's it's you know more challenging to see this now. But I'm just going to turn the effects off. So, I mean, already it looks better. I can see here that things were off with this box here, which I think is box four. I turned box four off. Yeah, so you can see, uh, it's just weird. There's, it's mostly on the left side. It's not going across the entire uh, box. So I'm gonna do new comp viewer so I can see my original here. I'm gonna go into box four, change this to one view. And we'll actually go into a custom view here just to see what's going on. And let's just go every other one and just see how that looks. Now, I'm not seeing a line over here, but I think that's because it's out of focus. So if I go back into my original comp here, hit AA and turn off my depth of field. Yeah, so now you can see it's right there. So that actually works way better for me. These are just very small changes that go a long ways uh, when you're finishing off a piece. So that's looking pretty good. And I also wanna go in and I wanna bump up the grain to one. I'm just not seeing a lot of it. So we'll bump that up to one. That looks pretty good. The Lumetri color is bothering me. So I'm actually gonna reset this and let's go in and make a few changes here. So let's go into our creative tab here and let's see here. I think did a little bit of experimentation here. I think that's the one I liked. And I'm gonna take my shadows over here more into the green and my tints, my highlights a little bit more in the blue here. Let's just see how that looks. And let me just move this box here. Let me move it back. The one that we adjusted, let me move it back. Maybe something like that. Just one more adjustment layer here and bring up the exposure. Maybe in there, it might be too much. And I'm also gonna do another curves adjustment here and just take out some of the red. Something like that. And one last thing here. I 
Maybe. Hmm. I do like the. I just still don't like that. Little bit of red there. Something like that. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, so uh, I'm good with that. Yeah, really interesting look. Uh, it looks, you know, different than what you see on social media, but uh, I'm not here to uh, show you step by step exactly how to recreate something. I want you to go out there and create uh, your own magical containment piece. So you can see here, really simple using 3D shape layers in 3D space with some effects and some camera movement can really uh, bring a piece to life.